Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the hunger, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to our hunting ground, folks. We are vampires, and we are hungry, and so we are going to leave the safety of our castle, head down the mountain, and come into the village where we will hunt tasty, tasty villagers. And the deeper we go, we can eventually make it into the forest, and if we get all the way around, we can actually get one of these beautiful roses from the labyrinth, which could be a big source of points. The tricky thing is, go the further into the village, and then the forest we go, the more danger we're in. We only have 15 rounds. At the end of round 15, the sun comes up, and if we have not made it back to the safety of the castle, or at the very least, the uh, graveyard around the castle, then it is curtains for us. And so, that's the situation. I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-play run-through. I am the green vampire. Jen is the purple vampire. And as part of setup, uh, each player draws two and keeps one mission. So Jen is a collector. She gets an extra point for every bonus token. And you can see they are scattered around in various spots. So Jen wants to get to these treasure chests quick because they're worth three points to her instead of the regular two. Me... I consider myself a bit of a zoologist. I will get four points if I have more animal familiars than Jen does at the end of the game. So that's something I need to be on the lookout for. Although uh, we've drawn three random cards, there are no animal familiars yet, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay, so the game is set up, we're ready to go, and we have to determine player order. What each player does at the beginning of every turn, they've got three cards in hand. This is a deck builder, by the way, folks. Beginning of the game, I've got Vampire Slur, Speed. I've got my Hunger, my Vampire Strength, more Vampire Speed, and more Vampire Speed. I am going to draw three of these cards, which is how I always start my turn, and I'll find out what my um, overall speed is. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see, Jen, she has a starting deck of cards as well. One, two, three... Her starting speed is three, four, five, six. Okay, that means I'm a little bit quicker than her. I've got the smaller number, so I will be the first player. Let's hunt. All right, so each round, um, you have three cards in your hand, and you're going to use all these cards for two things. First of all, um, if there are any particular effects like my hunger card here, that um, i got to pay attention to that. I can get an extra point for every human I hunt this turn because I've got the hunger in my hand. I've got some vampire speed, which doesn't do anything other than give me speed, and I've got the vampire thirst. So my speed is normally one, but it would be three if I had at least one human in my playing area. Now, I have not hunted any humans yet, so um, that's really not going to do me much good. And uh, otherwise, I'm pretty much done with these. Now, a lot of these cards you can get will say things like, at the beginning of your turn, or stuff like that. So you have to resolve all of that. I don't have any of those. So I don't have to worry about any of these effects right now. I instead am going to sum up my speed. Remember, it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've got 5 speed to spend this turn. First of all, I can use that speed to travel the path. And uh, if I have any speed after I'm done moving then I can spend the rest of it to go hunting. There are, there's Friar Tunk and uh, Eloise uh, here, just waiting to be hunted, but they cost three speed. So I've got five total. So if I were to only move two and then find myself in a village, I could spend the rest to hunt either of these. Or instead, I could get myself kind of a boosted vampire strength, which um, does have an extra power. Now, as it is, um, let's see, you cannot go hunting in this graveyard, so I'm going to, here's where we start, one, two, three, four, and hooray, I've made it to a village. So, um, in theory, if I were to stop here, I'd have one more speed, uh, which I could use to hunt in this village, but unfortunately, I need three right now. So, since I can't do that, I'm just going to keep on walking. And I've gone as far as I can go. And unfortunately, I did not get to do any deck building because I didn't quite have enough speed left over. So that was it for me. I then uh, refill my hand. Hey, it's my other three cards. So I'll have those next round. And uh, it is Jen's turn. So, oh, and of course, the other cards got discarded. Uh, bye bye All right. So this will be my hand going into the next round. Jen, meanwhile, has some speed. She also has some thirst and some strength. 
Okay, and again, all both of these, like with me, really these effects only come into play if Jen would have previously hunted a villager and then drawn that villager in hand at the same time she had this. So she's not going to use any of these powers. She's got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and uh, she's going to play them to move uh, because you can't go hunting in the castle. Humans don't come up here. One, two, three, four. Now she has two speed. Which means she still can't afford any of these. So she'll just go on ahead and spend the rest of her fee speed and go 1-2. Alright, so Jen's made it a bit further down in the first round. And then she redraws her hand. Okay, so that was the first round. Pretty uneventful. But um, now that we've left the castle and the surrounding graveyard, things are going to start picking up next turn. Now at the end of every round, after everybody's gone... We move the marker one forward. And also, all of the villagers who were very expensive, tough to, tough to hunt. I would have needed three speed to catch any of these. Well, they start getting a little bit more sleepy as the night grows on. Now you only need two speed to catch them. And we're going to bring out three more. Hey, there's Teresa. And there's uh, Rada. And, ooh, it's Cain. This is the first animal familiar. Remember, I'm a zoologist. I would like to get Cain into my deck. Uh, but everybody knows it, so Jen might want to buy that first. Okay. Whoa, hold on. Actually, let me correct the record there. Turns out, everybody keeps their objectives secret. Uh, there is no public knowledge about what your opponents are up to, and so... I'm going to mess that up for the rest of the video, but just wanted to set the record straight. And ironically, since I'm here, I might as well mention something else. You may notice a couple of objectives that are face up in the top left corner of the board. Those are public objectives that everybody is trying to do the best at. So those are public, and I completely forgot to mention them for the entire run through, but I do keep my own objective secret. Okay, let's keep going. So... It is time for round two. And now, uh, Jen will be first because it's only in the first round of the game when we're all still at the castle that we determine turn order based on whoever had the lowest total numbers. Once you get out and about, it's whoever has gone further away from the castle or closer to the labyrinth, however you want to look at it. The further you go, the faster you go, you'll get first dibs on stuff. So what has Jen got? She's got her hunger card. Get a point for every human you hunt this turn. She is definitely going to go hunting. She's got big vampire speed. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight points of speed this turn. Jen is going to move it, move it. And if she hunts, she gets an extra point. Now, there were no other, you know, um, use this at the beginning of your turn effect, so she doesn't have to worry about that. So first she moves, and then she hunts. And uh, she's got to decide how far she's going to move. She wants to have two or three speed left over so she can get uh, a card from this row or from this row. Hmm, let's see here. So how about... How about Jen move as far and as fast as she can? She has eight. She will go one, two, three, four, five, six... So she's pretty much made it completely out of the mountains. Um, she has two more. She could keep going... But instead, she's going to stop right here and spend her last two speed to hunt. So, who it will be her victim? Will it be Friar Tunk? Will it be Eloise? Or will it just be um, something that doesn't give her any points? You see, when you hunt the villagers, you get points. Four points for Eloise. Two points for Friar Tuck. Um, and, or Friar Tunk. So you think, no-brainer, right? Go for Eloise. She's worth four points for the two-speed. There's a problem with Eloise. Uh, she kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth because she had holy water. This is going to go into Jen's deck. And in future turns, when Eloise shows up, Jen won't be able to hunt on that turn. So she's getting more points now, but it'll slow her down later. Um, but, you know, Friar Tunk isn't all that either. I mean, he's a big old meal. He's going to slow Jen down. Every round that Friar Tunk comes up out of Jen's hand for the future, she's going to slow down by one. She won't be able to move as far because uh, she overate. So, uh, she could avoid both of those and get this streak. Now, this strength will really slow her down. Negative two speed whenever it comes up. But, when it comes up, this is one of those start of the round things. You can draw two cards or three cards if you drew a human. So, Jen will have bigger hands so she can do more later. But it gives her no points. So, what does she want? I think she feels... I mean, uh, yeah, she's going to take the vampire strength. Um... 
Right. Because, although, uh, here's the thing. Remember, Jen is a collector. She wants to stay in the lead. She wants to stay lean and mean. She wants to go fast so she can rush out here and beat me to all of these treasure tokens because there were three points to her instead of two. And with that in mind, both of these are going to slow her down. Eloise is just going to prevent her from hunting. So no, I think she's going to hunt Eloise. Okay, so Jen immediately scores four points. And now also, Jen's hunting up here in the mountains. This is easy pickings. If Jen hunts somebody in the village, she gets whatever points it says on the card, plus one more. If she goes hunting in the forest, she gets two more points. But as it is... Uh, Jen um, hunted Eloise. She gets four points plus no bonus because she's still in the mountains. This goes into her discard pile. It'll mess with her later, but it w um, it won't slow her down as much as these other cards. Okay, so uh, that was Jen's turn. She moved, she hunted, and you'll notice things did not refill. That there, Everything will slide over, and at the end of the round, we'll put new stuff out. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. She is all done at the end of her turn. She's going to draw back three more cards. And actually, she does not want to see Eloise because that's just, I mean, Eloise has no speed on the card. Although, if she combines Eloise with one of those other cards that says, hey, um, get this bonus when you draw a villager, let's see what she's got. She um, has speed, strength, and hunger. Ah, Eloise is sneaky. Okay. Or what remains of Eloise. Okay, so now it is my turn. And I totally forgotten what I had. I've got um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, nine speed, and I've got my strength. Draw one card. If I have a human in my playing area, I don't. So I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to be able to move up to nine. Let's go. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so if I stop right where Jen is, a couple things will happen. One, I can push her. If you stop in the same spot as another vampire, you can push them forward or backwards. So I could slow Dan down. And then I still would have two more speed, so I could uh, go hunting as well. But on the other hand, remember, I'm a zoologist. I want to get this animal familiar. So I think I'm not, I'm not going to push Jen. I'm going to stop one short so that I will have three speed so that I can get Cain. And Kane is a permanent card. Once I put Kane into play, uh, he will stick around and continue to provide his benefit. And so uh, the slow speed won't slow me down once I get into play. And his power is get one speed to hunt. If I um, end my turn on a well, I get a little bit of extra speed for hunting. Or if I, I can discard Kane whenever I want to um, to two hunts. Uh, in a in a turn, so that's pretty nice too. Although for now, Kane goes into my discard pile along with these cards. All right, so that was it for round two. We are done, and now things are starting to get interesting because you will notice there are villagers who have gotten super cheap. Friar Tunk has made it this far, but um, he's practically asleep now, so it's not going to take much speed to catch him. And now, over time, cards will accumulate in these bigger areas, and for one speed, you can grab all of them. But there's something else to do with the one speed column, which we'll talk about in a second. All right, anyway, so at the end of my turn... I uh, had to reshuffle my deck, like any deck builder, because I had to draw back three cards. And so I had one, two, three. And, oh, I didn't get Kane. Kane, where are you, pup? All right, anyway, though. So we're on to round three. Jen is in the lead. So she is still first. She has um, no special powers. So three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is how far Jen is going to move. So she'll go one, and all of a sudden, she's got a choice. Uh, because these are branching paths on this uh, long and winding road. All right, so she had seven right, so she's got six more. She could just keep going this way. Two, three, four, five, six. She could actually make it um, into the village. She could even, uh, what was it? She was here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. She could get her first reward. Oh, she could get this, which remember is worth two points plus whatever it says on the other side. And for Jen, it's worth three points. But she would use all of her speed to make it down there, which means she would not be able to hunt. And hunting is the main way you score points. Um, but... I think Jen's got a different plan. She will go one, two, three, four. And what did she have? She had she had, had six or seven. I don't remember. Um, all right, so she has seven total. So she went. She went. She has four. She's made it down here, and she's gonna stop on a well. 
wells are very important because when you go hunting, you can hunt twice. You can buy any card you want, and then you can hunt a second time, but only for things in the one column. So Jen has three speed left over. She spent four, she's got three, so she can hunt twice. I think she will go on ahead and get Friar Tunk. One, two, three... Or no, right, 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 right. one, two, two points, plus being in the village gives her another one. So she got three points for him. He's going to slow her down later. But there are ways to, um, you know, Fire Tunk was a big meal. It's gonna, Jen's got a belly full of blood. It's going to slow her down. There are ways to finish digesting a Fire Tunk. Now that Jen's gotten the points out of him, he doesn't have any kind of special power. So Jen wants to get rid of this card out of her deck as soon as possible through the act of digestion which she might be doing in the near future. So anyway, so she got that for two. She has one left over, and because she's at a well, she can hunt twice. Uh, she'll get this, and now she's got some vampire strength, which doesn't give her any points now, but will definitely uh, pump her up later. All right, so that was Jen's turn, and she's very close to getting her first treasure, which she likes to collect. All right, so that was Jen's turn. She then draws three more. One, two, three... And hey, there's Eloise. Okay, and so she's got a villager at the same time. She has Vampire Thirst. So instead of having a speed of one, she's really got a speed of three off of this card. Nice. All right, but in the meantime, it is my turn. And, right, so again, I don't get to do any of these powers. I've just got one, two, three, four, five speed. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to go one, two, and I've got a choice like Jen. I could keep on going, but I think I am going to move in a different direction. That was one, two, I have five, right? Three, four, five. Oh, shoot. Three, four, five. So I could end here at the tavern. Unfortunately, I used all my speed to get there, which is a bummer because for only two speed, if you come to the tavern, everybody's drunk. Uh, this is a deck full of whoever's hanging out at the tavern, and for only two speed, I could get all of them. I don't know what they are. Sometimes there are not there are cards that are just really not that great, and I might end up getting them, but I could make it all the way here, but then I would not have the speed to go hunting for them. Urgh, one, two, three, four, five. So that's kind of a bummer. So now, alternatively, I could, I've got five. I could just go one. And hey, I'm on a well, which means I could hunt twice. But unfortunately, you can only use the well um, when there's stuff for one that you can buy. So that's not great. So I'm only going to be able to hunt one, not two, like Jen did. So, and I've got five. But I'm just going to go two. I don't need to be at the well because I can't take advantage of it. And I mean, I'm not going to spend the rest of my speed. So with three speed left over, I could hunt anybody. And I haven't really looked. Here is uh, Tanya. Oh, she's nice. Five points. Doesn't slow down. That's uh, a good one to hunt. I've also got Father Eli here, who uh, is worth three points. And um, let's see. Oh, has the slow power. Right. Which means he should not have... Uh, when, when he came out, he would have been put over here because he was slow. Right. And actually, since he was supposed to be, he would be here for two speed you could get both of these oh that is interesting i should have paid a little bit more attention uh let's see also we got diego here who um is only worth three points and slows us down i think it's a no-brainer with my five left over i am totally going to have some um a noble uh blood tonight with tanya so that scores me five points and i was in the village so i got one more point Tanya goes into my deck. I would like to digest her because she provides no other benefit for me now. Now she's just going to slow me down. But anyway, she goes into my discard pile. Oops. Which is over here. This is my draw pile over there. And, all right, so she goes to my discard pile. And that was it. And so by staying here next turn, I know if I go one, two, three then I will be able, if I have three plus two speed, I'll be able to end at the end and do this. So I think that makes sense. I'm pretty happy with that. Wish me luck. Okay, so that was that. We have finished uh, round three, so we are on to round four. Things slide on over again. Three more come out. And uh, let's see, it's Mindy and Patricia and Bridget. No more animal familiars and uh right okay and was anybody no oh, and patricia is slow too everybody's slow is coming over here so um this is going to be filling up very quickly 
All right, and um, right. So that was that. We are on to round three. Jen is further along than I am, so she will be first again. And let's see here. So, and now Jen's got a choice again. Her vampire thirst, because she has a villager card in hand, is worth three speed. Four, five, six, seven. So Jen could move it. Also, Jen cannot hunt this turn because she's having some holy water burps. So that's not good. So she can move seven. She cannot hunt. So this would be really painful to spend all seven just to go one, two, and stop right here and then not hunt. That would be the worst. Jen wants this because it's worth more points to her, but I don't think she's going to do it. I think she's going to keep on going since she can't hunt. She just wants to use that speed to get as far as she can, as fast as she can. But she's got another choice. She has, what was it, seven? So she's going to go one. And now, is she going to get on the rail and start traveling the rail? Or is she going to stay on the road? Well, since she's going to not hunt, it would be two, three, four, five, six if she goes on the rail. She did it a well where she could do a double hunt. Oh, that's very sad. But, I mean, she'll make a lot of progress. And um, she'll on the rail, she can start getting to all of these bonuses. And they're all face up as well. There are some blanks. This could have been a blank. Jen knows she'll get the umbrella. She knows she'll get the velvet hat. She knows she'll get to draw an extra card, etc., etc. But I think... I think Jen is inclined... Oh, this is bad timing. She has... What was it? She had seven. She has six more. Two, three, four, five, six. So she could make it here. But there is something to bear in mind. Right here is a church. And there's a little symbol here saying this is where you can go to digest your holy meals. Remember, in her gen she um, ate Friar Tuck. Friar Tuck is slowing her down, just clogging up her deck. She's already gotten the points out of Friar Tuck. So she wants to end her turn on this church because he's a holy uh, villager, uh, which means she can digest him and remove this card from her deck. So she can thin her deck out. And if you look around, you can see over here is where you can just get like regular villagers digested. And um, oh, where's the, uh, uh, your, the uh, you can get soldiers digested. You can get rich noble um, over here at this castle. So um, to thin your, thin your deck out, you've got to hit these certain spots. Jen would like to take the train and get to all these. Oopsie. But I think instead she's going to go two, three, four, five, six. So that's as far as she could go. Now, um, the interesting thing is, now I, I, she'll just, on your turn, you decide which direction you're going to move. Uh, you can't, you can go, so Jen could start going back if she wants, or she could continue going forward if she ends here. You can't go boop, boop. You can't, you can't about face, but you can change directions. You could go one, two, three, or you could go one, two, three, four. So Jen's thinking, wherever she ends up next turn, she's just going to want to move here. Um, although, is she going to draw Friar Tuck? Friar Tuck is in the discard pile. Jen is not guaranteed he'll show up. So I think Jen is just going to move as far as she can. And next turn, if Friar Tuck is in her hand, she might decide to just spend one speed move, digest him, and then um, you know get some more villagers and you spend all her speed there. Okay, so that's where she ended up. She is done. She uh, discards her hand, and then she draws. She's got one card left, and so she's got to draw these. And she's hoping to see Friar Tuck in her hand. Let's go. She draws two more. One, two. We'll find out in a second what Jen drew. Because it's a deck builder. I wouldn't know what she has. Okay. So, um, it is my turn. And what have I got here? I've got no special powers. Um, so, I've just got one, two, three, four, five. I've just got five speed. All right. Well, that's fine. One, two, three. I'm done moving. I'll stay at the end. Four, five. I will feast well. Let's see what I got. All righty. I've got the nanny. And by the way, um, if I still had leftover speed and I want to get these, I can't. This um, hunt replaces the normal hunt. So I got another animal familiar. Nanny. Oh, very nice. And I got another one. Oh, I think I've definitely got my zoology bonus um, locked in now with Wee Vlad. And I also got Faith here. Uh, who gets me one point if I hunt Faith on the Plains. I am... Am I on the Plains? Is the Tavern considered to be on the Plains? I mean, this is the Plains over here. Hmm. I think so. I think pretty much all of this, whether you're... You know, is considered to be on the Plains. So, um, I got her for two points, plus one more because I hunted on the Plains, plus one more because if you hunt her when you're on the Plains. So, nice. Okay. 
So I got her. I got these. They'll eventually become permanents once I draw them. And that's that. One, two, three. I draw my next hand. And, oh, Kane is finally going to show up. Okay, we finished another round. Uh, villagers are starting to accrue. Boop, boop. Let's see, what have we got new? We've got uh, Fa uh, Faviana, uh, Nems, Father Nems, it looks like, and Ivo. Okay, you're not going to have a very good night, folks. Sorry about that. All right, so we continue on. Uh, it is the next round. We are in round five of 15. Jen is making a good... I mean, I think at this point, Jen wants to keep the speed up so that she can make it all the way to the labyrinth and then try to get back out. Now, there's an interesting thing. This is a two-sided board. I'm playing on the more friendly side of the board where you can make it pretty much anywhere, um, you know, on uh, the, oh, on the mountain. And you can see there's all these numbers here, which I didn't talk about before. If on the way back, say Jen makes it all the way to the labyrinth and then, you know, ends up coming back and ends up over here, this is as far as she gets, she will lose 10 points. She'll lose 15 points because, you know, when the sun comes up, she can kind of hide from the sun, but she's kind of stuck there for the day, so she'll lose some points. If you make it back to the graveyard, you'll only lose five. If you make it all the way back, the first player to make it all the way back is out of the game and they get 10 bonus points. Second player to do it gets six. And if you don't, if you don't make it onto the mountain, you lose, you die. Now, this is the friendly side. If I were to flip the board over, you would find that, oh, there's no numbers on here. You've got to make it all the way back at least to the graveyard. And if you don't make it back to the graveyard, if you only made it this far, you die. So it's a much more hardcore side of the board. Let's see. And so Jen was over here. Right. So, uh, Jen, I think she's made so much time, so quick. So we're only a third of the way through the game. She's going to make a run for the Labyrinth and try to get back. Uh, because these three cards, and the first player to get here gets their choice of the Perfect Rose, the Eternal Rose, or the Dead Rose. And all of them are very, very powerful. So, Jen will worry about that in a bit. Because right now, we get to see what she drew. And, oh, Friar Tunk. Uh, still kind of sloshing around. I think Jen needs to finish digesting. So she has two. Actually, and this is perfect. She, uh, this was going to be a slow turn for her anyway. Eloise comes up again. So Jen can't hunt, even if she wants to. She's only got two minus one. She's only got one speed. So I think with that one speed, Jen will just take a step back. And Jen says, oh, Friar Tunk went down good. This goes into her digestion pile. She keeps this card for end-of-game scoring because there can be things about, you know, collecting a certain number of religious people. There's other kinds of missions. You can see, actually, as part of setup, there were missions put all over the place. If we had stopped here, we could have gotten an additional mission to join the one we already have. But we just blew right by that. And um, Jen blew right by her chance to get more missions. Every graveyard is an opportunity to get more bonus objectives. So Jen would probably like to come over here and get this one. Maybe she'll do that next turn. It's only three steps and then she can hunt. Maybe we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, this goes into her digestion pile. All right. And because of the, even if she had speed left over, she couldn't hunt now anyway because of Eloise. She needs to dump. She needs to get up here. So uh, So her other choice is to get over here, get on the train, so she can get up to the castle and get rid of Eloise, because Eloise is a real buzzkill. So anyway, though, that um, was Jen's turn, and she is done. Even if she had speed left over, here's the interesting thing, if she had speed left over and she could hunt, if she were to hunt a, uh, a another holy figure, like, say, Nems here, Nems would be in her discard pile, uh, and whenever you um, digest, it can be a character in play that you've played this turn or one from your discard pile. Now, unfortunately, you can only do one per turn, though. If you had a whole bunch of holy uh, characters, you have to kind of stay in this area. Also, if on a turn you decide not to move, you cannot activate the space you're on again. So you actually have to move um, and then you know end your turn and then move back to digest more. So it's really, digestion is tough. You have to time it perfectly, and Jen just did. All right, so she's pretty happy with that. And she is done. She draws three more cards. One, two, three. We'll see what she's got coming up next. In the meantime, I've got Vampire Strength. If I draw one card, if I have a human in my playing area, I do not. So this just gives me two speed. Uh, vampire Speed gives me three. So I've got five speed and Kane shows up. Hey, Pooch, how are you? Doesn't give me any speed, but sticks around. If I end my turn on a well... 
um, I get an extra speed for more, I mean, remember, because the nice thing about Wells is you get to do two hunts instead of one. Or I can discard Kane whenever I want to um, have an extra hunt. So it's like I'm carrying the well with me. And Kane is just going to stick around. So Kane is now out of my deck, not slowing me down anymore, and I can wait till I hit a well. But in the meantime, what am I going to do? I've got five speed. Well, I could turn around and come back to land, but hey, now that I'm on the ocean, let's keep going. There's some rewards down here, like a treasure and a well. Let's go. One, two. Now, an interesting thing. If I end my turn on a boat, I can't hunt. Uh, because vampires, they don't do very well uh, on open water. But that's what I'm doing. I'm going one, two. I've ended on a well. I've got three more speed. And thanks to Kane, I've really got four speed. And those four speed let me do two hunts. Nice, nice, nice. And this has been building up for a while. There are um, three, four, five, six points just sitting here. And, and I still have three more, so I could get first dibs on one of these really expensive ones. Interesting. So, Patricia is worth two points, plus one more because I'm in a village. Um, and uh, no down effects, really. And uh, let's see. Father Eli, same thing. Uh, three points. Uh, Rada over here. Oh, whoops. Uh, Rada wa is fast, plus one. So I have to spend one more if I want to hunt in this pile because Rada drags them with her, and so we need I need a little bit more speed. So this would really cost me two to get those six points. If I come over here instead, I can get Diego, which is three. Diego will slow me down. And Teresa, who is confused. Um, ooh, okay. So this is an interesting one. Um, as, as long as I've got... Whenever I pull Teresa up, she doesn't give me any speed. So she's clogging my deck up. But I get confused because apparently she was drunk. Um, when, and so I'm a little drunk because I have fed on her. And because I'm confused, that means when I play, I must move four spaces away from the castle. Now that's great. That's moving further and further so I can get I can get some more rewards. That's great when I'm heading out. When I'm heading back, trying desperately to get home, this is a terrible noose around my neck. So, she's good for half the game. She's terrible for the rest of the game. Now, if I go on ahead and get her, I could be heading over to the castle to digest her. So, I want to make it here so that on the way back, she won't slow me down and cause me to walk the wrong way. And, in the meantime, seven points. I'm going to do it. I have four total to spend. Thanks to Kane, I'm spending one. I'm going to get Teresa. And I just got seven plus I'm in the village. Eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. And now I've still got three more, so I can um, eat, I can feed on any of these folks. All right, Ivo is worth two points. Doesn't really slow me down. Um, so I take Fabio, who is worth three. I mean, not all villagers are created equal. I definitely take uh, Fabio over Ivo. Let's see, Nems get one point uh, at the end of the game for each. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, so this is obviously a burn him at the stake type fella uh, looking for heretics. So if I took out some of the holy people in town, Nems, uh, it's gonna I'm gonna get some extra points for that. So this becomes an objective uh, without me having to stop at a graveyard. Interesting. Have I have I gotten any um, holy folks yet? I don't think I have. Yes, I have. I got faith. So Nems is already worth two points. And if I target who I'm going to digest, uh, that could really uh, that can really go big. Or I could just do Fabiana. Fabiana, I'd want to digest her in the village, which means uh, that's going to be tough for me to do because I'm out on open water, and I would have had to take the train to get over here to this village to digest her. So, oh, but I I could also go for Mindy. Uh, but Mindy's only worth one point. Bridget is worth two points and get plus one if you hunt Bridget on the plane. So I'd be getting three points if I get Bridget. So, but you know what? If I don't take Bridget, Bridget's going to get a lot cheaper. Although, that's not good for me because Jen is still in the lead. She is further away. Um... Although there's another way to keep track of stuff. Actually, uh, we are both considered to be in the plains. If there's anybody in the forest, they get to go first. Uh, if there's any, uh, then, So if there's nobody in the forest right now, then you look at the plains. We're both in the plains. And so you might say, well, what if I was over here? Who's further ahead, me or Jen? The way it works is when you're resolving one area to see who's first, Jen is first because she's on foot. 
On foot, people get to go before on train. On train, people get to go before on boat. So, um, you know, even if I were way over here, I'm still in the plains, I'm still on the boat, Jen would get to go first uh, because she took the footpath because she's, um, you know, wanted to have some, dig wanted to have a little extra digestive uh, break. So, I know I'm going to be late, which means I'm giving Jen first dibs on this hunt. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for Nims, and I want to keep an eye out for more um, holy meals because they are worth extra points to me at the end of the game. So, that's what I did. I am done. The round is over. We move on to round five. Sliding on over. Three new folks come out. Oh, Wiggles the Cobra! Oh, so adorable, Wiggles. All righty. And uh, let's see. Arthur and Chomp. Wow, I, I, I shuffled the heck out of this deck, folks. Uh, all the familiars are showing up top. You know, and I got to be a little worried about that. I've got three familiars now. There's two familiars. If Jen starts grabbing them, she, um, she'll get their powers. They're very nice, as you just saw with Kane. And I might have to worry about the fact that Jen might um, try to keep me from getting those four points because I have to have more. If Jen ties me, I lose those four points. So that's something to bear in mind as well. All right, so uh, we're moving on to the next round. Oh, by the way, I, I forgot. After your turn is over, you're supposed to flip this face down so everybody can remember that you've taken your turn. In a two-player game, I haven't really found that necessary, but maybe at higher player counts because turns can get really complex. But anyway, so we're moving on to the next round, and uh, Jen is up. She's got four, minus two, plus one, and she doesn't have any humans, so she has three total speed. And she doesn't get to use her vampire strength, unfortunately. Oh, wait. No, no. Oh, no, 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 so no, this was the upgraded vampire strength. She gets to draw two cards. If she had a human in hand, she would get to draw three. She doesn't, but she gets to draw two more. So she's got the hunger, and she still has no human in hands. Oh my goodness. And these other ones needed her to have a human. So anyway, so Jen's got four, five, um, three, four, five, six, seven. Jen is going to keep on moving. And, I mean, that gives her enough speed to make a choice. Does she get on the train and start heading over here so that she can... I mean, she needs to get on the train if she wants to get rid of Eloise. Or does she come over here and get another mission? And by stopping here, she'll have enough speed she could do some more hunting. Ooh, but if she comes over here, she gets all these bonuses. Oh! I think she's going to take that. I think she's going to stay on board. She's going to go one, two, three. And uh, because she ended here, she gets another mission. Now, this is really kind of funky. She's already got her one mission, which she's really failed at miserably. She has not picked up any of the bonus tokens to get bonus points. But what she gets to do now, she gets to look at all of these. And basically, she now gets to claim one. She, at the end of this, Jen's number of missions is going to increase by one. And um, so she's going to have two missions instead of one. And if she wants, she could take two of these and put this back. So it's really like this is now in the collection. So she has to choose. Does she want to stay a collector? Does she want to be royal? How about being devout? How about the old soldier's life? Um, you know, selective or a three-star dinner. Jen gets to take two of these now. And since she's failed at her collection, maybe... Well, let's see. She's hunted one royalty. She has hunted um, one uh, holy person gets six if you've hunted more. So this means... And, you know, this is public knowledge. So I think we both... No, Jen knows I've done this now. Jen knows I've got a few. She just saw I'm trying to get... So she knows she's not going to go for devout. And this goes back. Nobody else knows what it is. So, is Jen going to be selected? Get two points for each human of the type you have the least of that can be hunted. So, this are, uh, that, that, that you have hunted. All right. So, hmm. all right. Three star dinner. Get one point for each human you've hunted that's worth three. Exactly. How many has Jen done? She's hunted a, a prior tunk. All right. So, yeah, she hasn't really done very well with that so far. But she can still go for it. Uh, soldier's life. Has she hunted any soldiers? Has she has hunted one royal? So maybe she just wants to focus on royals. I think she is now. She's going to keep this one, and she can still go for that collector. Hmm. No, I think Jen's going to stick with it. She's going to continue trying to be a collector. All right, because she doesn't have to keep going this way. She could turn around now, get on the train, start picking up these, and she wants to get on the train to get rid of her royal. And now that she wants to collect more royals, she wants to get here even more so she can thin her deck so she'll have a, a quicker escape route back to the castle. Okay, so that was that. And if I recall how much did Jen have seven? She had one, two, three, four, five. She had four cards. It was four, five, three, four, five, six, seven. 
So she went one, two, three. Jen still has four speed. Now, unfortunately, she's not at a well, so she can only recruit one. And uh, what she would like to do is recruit royals now. And there are no... Oh, no! She could get Mindy, but that's ridiculous. Um, are there any royals in this? This is nice. Oh, there's another holy. And two others. So... Uh, so this costs. So this would cost two because of Feta, and Jen would get one, two, three, four, five, six, and none of them slow her down. So that's not bad. But the more cards you fill with villagers, the fuller your tummy is of their delicious blood, and the slower you're going to be. These just clog up your deck. So it is dangerous when you're trying to get back, and all you do is draw a bunch of villagers who have zero speed, and you're basically suffering some from indigestion while the sun is rising. All right, now remember, Jen also, she has enough. She could get Chomp or Wiggles here, and Jen might want to do that to have a special permanent power. Plus, if she um, ties me, I lose my points. So does she want Wiggles? You can digest Wiggles anytime you want to digest one card from your playing area and get two points. Oh, Wiggles helps the, the digestion. Or Chomp, get one point if you hunt at least one human. Um, all right, if you do not move, you may hunt an... Oh, wow, those are both fantastic. Wow. I think Jen... Jen's going to take Wiggles. Uh, not only because I, I had a dog named Wiggles as a, as a child, uh, but also Jen wants to thin her deck out. Wiggles is definitely going to help with that. Okay, so that was it for her. She draws one. Her draw pile is empty. She's got a shuffle more. Two, three. All righty. So we'll see what she's up to next turn. But in the meantime, um, let's see here. Oh, whoops. I forgot. At the end of my turn, I had to discard these. I did not discard Kane. I drew three more. I had one. And so, I mean, I'm, there, I've got four cards in hand, basically. One. That's why you watch the Klingon subtitles turned on, folks. I'm sure Paulo noted that I totally forgot to draw my next hand. One, two, three. All right, and then that goes back into my draw pile. And, okay, what do we got? Oh, Teresa. Teresa is confused. Uh, this is a draw effect. I must immediately do it. Move four spaces. One, two, three, four. All right? And she counts as a human, so she pumps up my vampire thirst. So I've got three speed off of this, four speed off of that. All right. So I've got seven more speed, and that's it. Wow. Wow, I am really zipping along. Boy, howdy. Um, interestingly, there's a well here. So I could, if I if I, I just stand here, I've got seven to spend. I'll spend three over here, and then I'll probably get that for one. But, I mean, that's such a huge burst of speed. I feel like I've got to use it. So I've got seven. One. Okay, so I've got enough. Let's see. Two, three, four, five... And next turn, I could try to get rid of... I do have a royal, don't I? I don't remember. Yes, I do. I've got Teresa. Yes! Teresa could kill me. This drunkenness on my way out could kill me. I want... And she's in my discard pile right now, and she's going to stay there. So if I end my turn up here, I can digest her. Now that's one, two, three, four, five. Let's do it. One. Two, three, four, five. I just skipped all of these bonuses. I haven't gotten any missions, but I've, I've got two more speed, so I'm going to be able to hunt. But um, I can discard, I can digest any royal I want that's in play or in my discard pile. And these other ones were, uh, she, she was in play. I'm going to digest her right now. You can see I've got a space for it. I'll just go on ahead and slip her underneath. So she is, I am, I got a huge burst of speed from her, and now she's not going to bother me on the way out. And I can be making a run to get the first. And by the way, I'm in the forest now, which means next round, I get to go first. All right. And so I still had two left over. So I could buy all of these for two. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get these. All right. So I just got one, two, three, four, five, six points. And since I was in the forest where I hunted, I get two more. So that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. Now, that's dangerous. All those villagers are going to be a real hassle on the way back out. Um, so we'll see what happens. But that was it for me. We are on now to round seven. We are 15 rounds total. We're basically at the halfway mark. Oh, I need to draw three more cards. One, two, three. I'm going to get some more familiars. Okay, this is going to be a big... I'm not going to do much this turn, but I'm setting myself up for all kinds of stuff later. Sliding on over. New folks come out. And let's see here. Uh, Zephaniah is another holy character. 
And when you hunt Zephaniah, you may digest one card from your playing area or discard pile. So um, she's not clogging her up because you get rid of something and get her, and she's worth five points. Nice. Uh, Echo, the very scary kitty cat, but uh, actually in several because she echoes. And Eunice. All right. Eunice is spicy. Uh, if you feed on somebody spicy, um, you have to, or basically nothing happens immediately, but when, you, uh, when it comes into turn later, you must move towards the nearest well. And if you're on a well at the end of your turn, you discard her. Uh, you could get, you could digest her at a village, or you can discard her. You can basically, I guess, you throw up at the well because she's so spicy. Um, you know, what's uh, you gotta throw it up, um, and that's tricky. That could be great. It could give you uh, if you're moving forward. But what if you're on your way back? And she comes up, and then you have to move away from safety to go throw up at the well. So spicy can be tricky. All right, and so that's that. We're on to the next round. I am first, because I've made it to the forest. Jen is now lagging behind, but Jen's got two missions instead of one. Plus, she's uh, uh, in a situation where she's thinking about coming back up here. She'd like to get rid of those royals as well. She hasn't gotten any soldiers, so making up here doesn't really help her necessarily. She could make a, she could do a double shop though at this well. She could make it up here, um, but that's all secondary because I'm up first, and so I like ending my turn uh, so I can get more speed with Kane. Nanny says I get two points for each vampire I push. Now this isn't that useful in a two-player game. In a four-player game, you're going to be bumping into players all the time and pushing them around, and then Nanny gives you the points for doing it. All right, um, all right, and also they end up, you know, having to discard their permanent cards they've got lying around. V we Vlad here get one speed per human who's worth one or two in your playing area. So we Vlad and um, yeah, Faith. So I've got one extra speed, and I, as long as We Vlad stays out here, I've got extra speed for getting lower value humans. And that's good, because I have no speed. Teresa doesn't give me any speed. Um, or I'm sorry, not Teresa. Faith. So, We Vlad is all I've got. I've got one speed, thanks to We Vlad. That's not great. That's pretty disappointing. After such a... Well, I had a big turn last time. So, I will move one forward. And because I'm here, I get to now maybe take another mission. But I don't have enough speed to keep sur uh, searching. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. So, I could come here and get a mission. But I could one step go back and be on a well because Kane gives me one speed to hunt on wells. So if I move back, Kane is going to let me get either of these, which are points. If I move forward, I can get another mission. Those are points too. What should I do? I'm not quite sure, folks, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the basic flow of the hunger. Now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.